this episode of American Greed. A billionaire CEO who preys on patients in pain. They're drug pushers in suits. That's basically what they are. Go inside the criminal scheme of John Kapoor, whose drug company cashes in big time on the opioid crisis. People don't matter. Laws don't matter. Morality doesn't matter. He cared about money. Bribing doctors to prescribe high doses of its addictive product, Kapoor's team adds fuel to the deadly epidemic. To really throw that to the wind and to say that profits matter more is what we have here. And trusting victims pay a horrible price. Not one day goes by that there isn't some time during the day that you're reminded she's gone. Kapoor becomes the first big pharma chairman of the board to go to jail. And tonight, his top salesman sits down with American Greed to share his secrets. I'm simply telling the truth because people deserve the truth. epidemic comes a stunning arrest. And it's not some no-name middle manager at a huge company or an over-prescribing doctor. No, this arrest is at the very top. The founder and chairman of the board of a major pharmaceutical company, Insys Therapeutics. John Kapoor is charged with conspiring to bribe doctors to push his addictive and potentially deadly drug, Subsys. It's a stunning turn for a man who seems to embody the American dream. He was a guy who was looking to build things and was willing to push very hard to do it. An immigrant from India who'd come to the United States with almost nothing, Kapoor has built a fortune over decades in the drug business. I mean, he succeeded in an industry that, it's, that, that has seen more than its fair share of failures. And with the help of photo ops like this, he's also built a reputation Three. as a philanthropist. After donating more than $10 million to the University of Buffalo, his alma mater, Kapoor gets his name on a building in return, a coveted symbol of success. It's really good to be back here today to participate in a, what I consider a milestone day in uh, the history of School of Pharmacy. But in truth, John Kapoor's long career has been shattered by controversy. In 1987, Kapoor is running an Illinois-based company called LifeAmed that markets its products as the best. One is an infection-fighting drug called Pentamides across the country. It's a deadly disease which has been spreading unchecked. Tens of thousands of infected Americans are dying. Many are suffering from a type of pneumonia known as PCP. In the 80s, uh, 75% of people who were diagnosed with HIV AIDS had PCP. And it was one way that people with AIDS were dying. There is a desperate need for treatment. And the most effective drug available is John Kapoor's pentamidine. And so in the crisis of the epidemic, Kapoor sees dollar signs. Claiming unforeseen expenses, he jacked up the price of the drug by 300%. We saw that as price gouging, which I can't imagine any other term to use for it. And we were outraged. Chicago's AIDS activists are primed for protest. And they take to the highway, straight out to LifeAmed's headquarters. We had a huge banner that said, death Med." Get it? Lifomed, Deathomed. We set up a, a, a graveyard on the uh, lawn of Lifomed, laid down, and did a diet. The controversy puts Kapoor's name into national news stories, but he is largely untouched by the crisis. Later, he sells Lifomed and reportedly clears $100 million in the deal. And for Gene Crocker, Kapoor's price hike of pentamidine will always be infuriating. Many, many people died. Many, many people struggled to get those medications. I mean, if that is not greed, if that is not an immoral act, I don't know what is. Over the next two decades, John Kapoor invests in multiple drug companies, and the millions add up. At age 68, he is a wealthy man and living in Arizona. But he is not here to retire. On the contrary, he is 
founded a company, Insys Therapeutics. And in 2012, he is about to launch a new product, just in time for a new epidemic, the opioid epidemic. Again, thousands of people are sick and dying. But this time, the cause is not a virus. But the latest front in the war on drugs turns out it's your medicine cabinet. Without a doubt that the start of the epidemic rests with prescription drugs. It was the really appalling sales tactics that pharmaceutical companies use to widely promote their products. And that really led to the massive overuse of opioids in the population. And into this epidemic of a prescription drug, made from fentanyl, a drug 50 to 100 times more powerful than morphine, it's called Subsys. Kapoor's company promotes the drug in videos like this as an under-the-tongue spray, approved by the FDA for cancer patients. It's a rapid onset opioid designed to treat cancer patients who are already on an around-the-clock opioid. It's not rocket science. It's a dangerous drug. Kapoor has paid for the development of Subsys himself. Close to $60 million of his own money is on the line. The drug hits the market in March 2012, but the sales are not good enough for Kapoor. Kapoor is really unhappy. He calls it the worst effing uh, pharmaceutical launch in the history of pharmaceuticals. Eager to make his drug quickly profitable, Kapoor looks for a VP of sales hungry for success. And he finds him in an experienced drug salesman, Alec Berlikoff. Berlikoff is laser focused on making money, and lots of it motivated, he says, by a traumatic childhood experience. When we grew up in Long Island, New York, and my dad came to us and said, we're out of money. We got to go. We got to move to Florida. I got to start all over again. That's what I'm afraid of. And I promised myself I would never allow that to happen. And so he signs on with the billionaire entrepreneur, John Kapoor. I thought this was the opportunity of a lifetime that anyone would want to be in my shoes and be able to take orders from a man who made money. Next, meet the Insys sales team. This was the kind of person that they wanted in the company, someone who would willingly use her sexuality to sell. More than 10 years into America's opioid epidemic, Insys Therapeutics founder John Kapoor is looking to turbocharge sales of the company's powerful new opioid, Subsys. And in 2013, that high-powered sales effort makes its way to Corpus Christi, Texas. There, for 20 years, Paul Lara builds a thriving business catching shrimp. I, I bought a big boat, really big, beautiful boat, and then I was really catching shrimp. I thought I was going to do that the rest of my life, without a doubt. His daughter, Ashley, loves sharing the life with her dad. That was kind of my favorite Saturday thing. You know, we'd have a fun day selling and just finding all kinds of creatures in, in the box um, that came out of the waters. One day, however, Lara makes a misstep getting off the boat. And I fell and I hit my neck and, and my lower back. And my life changed after this, completely. Seven years later, Lara is still in a back surgery and I was it's still in so much pain. What he does not know is that his search for relief will lead him to sepsis and that it will nearly destroy his life. He becomes just one of many caught up in a scheme cooked up at Insys Therapeutics and run by the VP of Sales, Alec Berlikoff. I want to preface, I am not proud of this. I am not gloating. There not a day goes by where I don't regret what I did. I'm simply telling the truth because people deserve the truth as to what took place. And according to Berlikoff, the truth is that when he goes to work at Insys, he believes John Kapoor holds his future in his hands. Unfortunately, I wanted to please him so badly. And I wanted to, I wanted to be successful so badly that I was willing to do anything and everything he asked. And what Kapoor wants is to have his fentanyl spray substance profitable before he takes Insys public. According to Berlikoff, the message is clear. All that matters is money. And so when Berlikoff hires his sales team, there is just one question. How important is money to you? Was an interview question. 
And on a scale of one to ten, if they didn't answer ten, they didn't get the job. Where to find the best people? Where else? A strip club. That's where Berlikoff meets Sunrise Lee, an exotic dancer who knows how to close. After one sales meeting, she and the doctor head to a nightclub where she offers him something special, a lap dance. This was the kind of person that they wanted in the company, someone who would willingly use her sexuality to sell in a way that wasn't just being a beautiful, attractive thing to look at, but in a I'm giving lap dances to someone kind of way. And they were comfortable with that. With the sales force coming on board, next, the search is on for doctors. Remember, substance was originally created to alleviate the pain of cancer patients in their final days. But that's a limited market. And John Kapoor wants to move his drug out of hospice and into everyday lives. So the hunt is on for pain doctors who will help him expand the use of substance and who are willing to write prescription after prescription of a dangerous opioid. There were plenty of bad actors, people who essentially served as drug pushers, whose volumes of prescriptions by any rational standard made no sense. One likely candidate is in Chicago. When the incest rep pays a visit, she reports by email that he runs, quote, a very shady pill mill and only accepts cash. The response from Insys? Stick with him, with an offer to pay the doctors to hold meetings with fellow doctors to discuss the benefits of substance. But educating doctors is not the real purpose of the money, and that is spelled out in a candid conversation. The candid conversation was, Doctor, we are willing to pay you in the way of a speaker fee. We really don't care what you do or don't do. All we care about is the more substance you prescribe, the more we will pay you to speak. Are you okay with that? The question is understood to be, are you okay taking a bribe? And the person approving this sales strategy is John Kapoor. You say, okay, if this is what this man wants and he's a billionaire, he must know what he's doing, then I'm going to do it. In, in any... In any corporate criminal organization it's always going to come down to the leadership at the top right if the leadership has expectations for you to be ethical then you're going to find that the company is generally ethical and here the expectations were set and enforced by kapoor on a daily basis and they were not ethical they were the opposite of that they were make money period and doctors want to make money too Across the country, doctors sign up for the INSYS speaker program and start to cash in. Mobile, Alabama, Saginaw, Michigan, Summersworth, New Hampshire, Sherwood, Arkansas, Derby, Connecticut, and Corpus Christi, Texas. Their pain management doctor Judson Somerville has paid for 58 substance speaking engagement in just over a year. So more than one a week in, you know, Laredo, Texas, and because there really weren't even that many places they were doctors they could speak to in those areas. But who need doctors? Look through the records and see the so-called speaking engagements are expensive meals paid for by INSYS and attended most often by Dr. Somerville, his staff, and the INSYS rep. No one really cared at all what the programs consisted of. We hardly cared if they even took place. The only thing that people cared about at INSYS was if a check was being caught to that physician, was the physician prescribing more of the product? And Somerville is prescribing. In 2013, Intis pays him over $123,000, and he writes 527 substance prescriptions, a rate of 10 each week. Some of those go to Paul Lara. And when I went to Dr. Somerville, and he said, well, I've got just the medicine for you, you know. Right at the start, Lara is given the highest power dose of substance, 1,600 micrograms of a potentially deadly... Slowly it started to work. Couldn't find keys. Then I couldn't find my car. I even got lost on the way home to a place that I've lived my entire life. Then I started having hallucinations. I, I actually was thinking that I had like a tumor in my brain or something. Paul Lara loses his job and is never employed full-time again. And later his daughter, Ashley, speculates on the real reason 
her father was given substance. The motives were never to heal him. The motives were to get a kickback from this company. And 1,200 miles away in Arizona, the company knows its strategy of paying doctors is paying off. Subsys sales are up 1,000%. And so the budget for speaker fees moves higher and higher. And so does the number of prescriptions. They're drug pushers in suits. That's basically what they are. They're drug dealers who go to a business and wear suits and just disguise themselves like they're doing something different than what they are. Next. For one patient, it's subsis or nothing. If you don't take that, you're not with our practice anymore. By the spring of 2013, the goal of making subsis profitable has been met. Insys Therapeutics goes public. Biotech cancer type company here, Insys Therapeutics, up 400%. In the next three years, Insys stock will soar. And John Kapoor, its largest shareholder, reaches a net worth of $2.1 billion. We had one sole investor in the company prior to the IPO, Dr. John Kapoor. Kapoor had had a lot of successes. So when someone like that comes to Wall Street with a new idea that looks like it can generate sales, that's something that investors or some investors are likely to want to put some of their money in. But what investors don't know is how Kapoor is generating his profits and how he runs his company with a ruthless micromanagerial style. He is very controlling, unlike other executives who we see at that level. He is intimately involved in the details of Insys Therapeutics, and there is nothing that, that happened at that company that wasn't without his permission or direction. He is so deeply involved that he regularly checks the performance of individual doctors to make sure that the money he is investing in bribes is paying off in prescriptions. John Kapoor had an obsession, an obsession with return on investment. Everything and anything came down to, did we get a return on investment? Yes or no? According to federal prosecutors, Kapoor insists on a minimum return on investment of thousand dollars in, in sales of the drug and even as profits skyrocket if one doctor's numbers are off there is hell to pay uh, he would get heated he would get loud um, and he would he would berate the executives and that sort of control and that intimidation filtered all the way down through the person often in the line of fire is the VP of sales Alec Berlikoff I would take a down a shellacking i mean it would take me hours sometimes days to get over the beating that i would take but it's not just the number of prescriptions that matter to kapoor he also wants prescriptions at ever increasing dosages for obvious reasons essentially the higher the dose the more addicted the person is the more he's going to need and you've got a customer for life and the way to motivate salespeople to push doctors to increase the dose Money, of course. And into sales materials show, the higher the dose, the bigger the commission. He lived, ate, and breathed. Return on investment. And if the doctors don't deliver what Kapoor wants, then he would expect for you to fire the speaker, or perhaps on a good day, if he was feeling kind and forgiving, you would be asked to go to that speaker and say, hey, if we don't see a return on investment in the next week or two, you will not be speaking for the company anymore. There's no way that anyone within that company didn't know that they were creating increased risks of people becoming addicted. And to really throw that to the wind and to say that profits matter more is what we have here. And anyone who wants to see how all this plays out for people to Johnson County, Kansas. Here, the long reach of the INSYS scheme touches a number of unsuspecting patients. They were as vulnerable as you could get. They're, they're individuals who are already in pain, who are seeking uh, help from uh, a trusted source, their, their doctor. In Overland Park, Kansas, a doctor at a pain clinic has paid $220,000 over two years by INSYS. But that is something Mike Whitham does not 
he has prescribed substance for excruciating ulcer pain. He didn't describe it as for cancer patients. Uh, didn't give me any warnings about it. It was just, here, try this. And Whitham does not know Insys is incentivizing prescriptions of higher doses. He just knows his dose soars in four months. We went from four and then to 1,600, but it was all very quickly. Whitham says he gets to a point where he is so drugged out he spends entire days in bed. But the worst is how he feels waiting for the next spray. I got extremely angry. Uh, my kids knew to not be around me when that happened, and they called me Mean Daddy. And when he asks to make a change, it's clear. It's substance or nothing. I remember one of the nurses came in and said, what you are prescribed is what you take, and that is it. If you don't take that, you're not with our practice anymore. Carrie Ballou has the same doctor. She suffers from back pain, and so the doctor prescribes the fentanyl spray. I believed everything that he said and um, followed it to a T. <laughs> but as her dose is increased, Carrie Ballou says she is becoming addicted. I was supposed to take it every six hours, and, you know, after just two or three hours, I could feel, you know, a little bit of shaking, like it was time to take it, um, even though it, it wasn't proper time. More and more in her drug state, Carrie Ballou withdraws from family life. My sister, she called me an addict and I got very angry and we didn't talk for a, a good period of time um, because I was very defensive and, um, you know, truly in my heart felt I have to have this to survive. But back at Insys, the struggles of people like Carrie Ballou are rarely, if ever, discussed. It's an abstraction to people like Kapoor. He never sees these patients. To him, they're just numbers. They're just prescriptions. They're just dollar signs. If anything puts the disconnect between Insys and its patients into perspective, it is this video made for a sales meeting. It is about increasing doses of medication, a process called titration. What that video shows is the state of mind of the people who are presenting that to the sales staff at their national meeting. You're in the middle of an opioid epidemic. You've got the highest possible dosage of this fentanyl spray dancing around and rapping on the screen. It wasn't, you know, John Kapoor in a back room, you know, pushing this out. It was John Kapoor pushing it out, and then the whole culture of is being swallowed by that, by that group. Next for John Kapoor, it seems it's never enough. There's no more lines to cross for anybody who still has their brain halfway intact. Yet he wants me. When the FDA approves the sale of Insys Therapeutics powerful opioid, Subsys, it is clear that the drug is to be used for the treatment of breakthrough pain in cancer patients. And founder John Kapoor says he deeply understands that pain. As he tells reporter Matthew Herper in an interview, he lost his wife, Aditha, to the disease. It was really a, a touching moment. Was He talked about how for cancer patients, um, pain isn't just pain. The pain's a really terrible thing, and people don't appreciate the need for these drugs. But despite his personal experience, Kapoor markets his drug not for cancer patients, but for pain patients in what is called off-label use. And that presents a problem for insurance companies. Most companies wanted it to be on-label. A doctor can prescribe substance for whatever they want. They can write off-label prescriptions, but the insurance company doesn't have to approve it. And if insurance companies won't pay for it, patients can't afford it. The cost for one month's prescription can be as high as $19,000. And so one answer is to turn pain patients into cancer patients. At his doctor's office, Mike Whitham says he is asked a strange question. Would you feel comfortable saying you have cancer? And at that time I had told her, cancer is probably the only thing I don't have. But I don't have that and I don't feel comfortable. That was the last day I got a prescription for substances. And with patients unwilling to lie and company profits dependent on insurance approvals, Insys creates a call 
where its employees spin the truth. So they would call and uh, pose as the doctor's office, and they would do everything in their power to put an argument in front of the insurance company to get them to pay. Are you speaking to a member or a provider? Um, I'm, I'm calling with a provider. These recordings made by insurance companies illustrate how the center operates. What is the medication you are requesting? Sepsis, S-U-B-S-Y-S, 400 micrograms. This is one of the operators. She says in a video deposition taken for a civil case that she is trained to be very careful with her words. We were supposed to say we were with the doctor's office, not from the doctor's office. There's a difference. That is just one of the word games INSYS employees play. There are many. Using the word urgent gets a quick response. Patients are quite significant pain. Can you see a phone that urgent? Um, sure. One, you put this to urgent. Second. And because sepsis is a spray, saying the patient has difficulty swallowing is very effective. The patient could have breaking pain and, uh, you know, they have the difficulty following oral medication. Sometimes the involved, the patient first has one kind of cancer. The information, it looks like it is um, unspecified upper limb in that area. But minutes later, it has evolved. It looks like the cervical area, um, it looks like that's where the location is of the chronic pain syndrome is. So it's cervical cancer. Is that what you say, cervical cancer? It's the cervical area where the chronic pain is. Got it. The prescription is approved, which is good news for the INSYS caller. The pressure for success is tremendous. Their bosses were telling them, if you can't get it approved, they'll find somebody who can. You've got to ride the gray line. You've got to get these insurance companies to pay. It's a game. You just have to tell them what they want to hear. Overall, the system works well. In just over three years, the call operators fraudulently get approvals for an estimated $300 million worth of prescriptions paid for by insurance companies and Medicare. But Kapoor wants even greater approval rates, and for Berlikoff, that is pushing the staff too far. They have crossed so many lines to get this drug approved and to get it in the hands of people that you can't fathom asking them to cross another line. There's no lines to cross for anybody who still has their brain halfway intact. Yet he wants more. And the costs paid by patients using sepsis continue to grow. Seven years after the drug goes on sale, the FDA has 9,000 adverse event reports on sepsis. And many of those include people who died. In January 2015, this call operator gets approval for a 31-year-old patient named Sarah Fuller. Sarah suffers from fibromyalgia and back pain. What is the diagnosis for the patient? As instructed by INSYS, she crafts her words carefully, leaving out the word cancer in describing the need for the drug. The doctor's treating the patient with breakthrough pain. Sarah's prescription is approved for 200 micrograms. It is later increased to 600. After more than a year on sepsis, Sarah Fuller dies by a multi-drug overdose. Every time you go through a holiday, her birthday, um, the day she was supposed to be married, you know, you do everything at a cemetery. Not one day goes by that there isn't some time during the day that you're reminded she's gone. And back at Insys, Alec Berlikoff is beginning to realize his dream job is becoming a nightmare. We know we've pushed this to the brink. None of us are feeling good about this anymore. None of us want the extra dollars that come along with seeing or hearing a very negative story. None of us want that. But John Kapoor presses on, asking for daily reports. And everything else doesn't matter. People don't matter. Laws don't matter. Morality doesn't matter. You care about money. Next, who gets nabbed and who goes free? And I lived for at least a year, waking up every day, looking out my window for that black man, the FBI. In Corpus Christi in December 2013, Paul Lara heads to Dr. Somerville to get his prescription renewed. The people were standing in the halls and they were angry. There is big news. The doctor's license has been temporarily suspended. Three of his patients overdosed and died. 
and now other doctors in the area refuse to see Somerville's patients. Laura has no choice. From the highest dose of a fentanyl painkiller, he goes off cold turkey. I thought I was dying when I was taking it. I was on death's door without it. <laughs> it was like the worst flu you can imagine times a hundred. Lara has found himself in the center of a government crackdown on opioid prescribers, some of whom take money from INSYS. Across the country, substance prescribing doctors are being indicted, charged with receiving kickbacks from INSYS. The house of cards has fallen, but Kapoor appears unfazed. To a guy like Kapoor, this was collateral damage. Um, it was just, find me another doctor. Find me another doctor in that area who can prescribe my product. In fact, Kapoor appears so confident that he will not be indicted in the crimes, he sits down with Forbes magazine reporter Matthew Herper in October 2016. He was a very calm, cheerful man. He smiled a lot. He was very unperturbed by the allegations. Kapoor describes his surprise at doctors that overprescribe and suggests that something happened in the field he didn't know about. He said it wasn't his responsibility. You know, he said, I'm an investor. I don't handle what goes on day to day. When there's a problem, I'm here to, to fix things. He, he spoke as if he wasn't really involved in the day to day decision making. What is surprising about this interview is that Kapoor knows that his company is under federal investigation. Three years before the interview, INSYS is served subpoenas from the Department of Justice. But there is little real change in how the company operates. They continue to bribe doctors, they continue to lie to insurers, they continue to encourage doctors to write higher doses. The reason Kapoor is marketing are typically required to just pay a fine. It was just assumed as an acceptable cost of promoting sales. And while Kapoor apparently believes he is not in danger of prosecution, Alec Berlikov makes a different assumption, that he's next. I mean, I was the head of sales. I did everything they asked me to do. <laughs> How could I not be arrested? And in December 2016, he gets the answer. And I lived for... At least a year, waking up every day, looking out my window for that black man or the FBI or whomever. And one day it came. I looked out the window, saw a lot of vehicles. Some didn't look right, some didn't feel right. And, you know, within an hour, I was being uh, taken away out of my house. He's not alone. On that day, five other INSYS executives are arrested and indicted on charges of fraud. But not John Kapoor. My take is he did throw me and everyone else to the wolves. He just kept throwing us. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Here, take this guy, take this guy, take this guy. What else do you need? What else do you want? Just don't take me. Next, why does one crook rap on another? Because I had enough. Enough of the lies and the bull****. that John Kapoor earned through his long career, there is one he likely never sees coming. Look, he's done nothing wrong. His charges are serious and we intend to fight them vigorously. In October 2017, he was arrested and charged with leading a conspiracy to bribe doctors. He is now the first chairman of the board of a pharmaceutical company to be criminally charged for his role in the opioid epidemic. And why is John Kapoor the one who gets hit? One big reason is Alec Burlikov, who steps up and gives the prosecutors just what they need. You need an insider. There is nothing like having somebody who's sitting there at the table with the other bad guys talking about the crimes that they're about to commit. Burlikov pleads guilty to charges of bribing doctors and defrauding health insurers. And I don't want to live with those secrets in my, in my mind or my heart or my soul any longer that's my decision that's why i pled guilty that's why i gave up the opportunity to go to trial i did all of that because i had enough enough of the lies and the bull the trial among those
to testify for the government is one doctor who admits he traded his patient's safety for money. And I remember him testifying about having a patient who had a mental condition, such they thought they were in pain, but they really weren't. But he gave that person sepsis anyway. And then there is also the testimony of victims, like Paul Lara, who watches John Kapoor while he tells his own story on the witness stand. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. We're saying this. I actually feel sorry for the man. And this man knew people were dying and just kept on putting their money in his pocket. Donating places, having his, his name and his wife's name put on buildings. And the amount of greed that this man had is just unbelievable. Kapoor's defense attorney argues that the blame belongs to Alec Berlikoff, who cut a lot of side deals on his own. Berlikoff says the deals he made with doctors were all approved and paid for by Kapoor. I'm guilty. I did all this. But none of this happens without the approval, without the say-so, without the direction, without the dollars. We're talking about millions of dollars being paid to doctors. That's not my money. It's not my call. After a 10-week trial, Kapoor is convicted of racketeering conspiracy and sentenced to five and a half years in prison. And I hope that the message being sent here is that the government is going to go after the people in the boardroom. You know, it's not just going to be the bad doctors anymore. Following Kapoor's conviction, the University of Buffalo removes the name John Kapoor on its pharmacy building. And his multiple billions? They're gone. Into stock plummets at the news of his arrest. The company declares bankruptcy in 2019. He's still a wealthy man. In terms of the money that he has, he's lost literally billions as a result of the greed and the arrogance. Through his attorney, Kapoor declines American Greed's request for comment. Alec Berlikoff is sentenced to two years and two months. And as he heads to prison, he looks back on his plan to avoid his father's experience. Work for a man like Kapoor, I would never have to tell my kids, we don't have any money. Well, guess what? That's exactly what I tell my kids every day. We lost everything. We have nothing. But what we have is love, we have our relationships, and we have an opportunity to move forward. And that's more than a lot of people have. Of all the ways that the INSYS scheme hurt its victims, some say the most damaging is the way it destroyed their trust in people who pretended to do anything for almost two years. Because I just didn't trust anybody. It certainly made things worse. I finally did go back to the doctor. Because all the things I did have are worse. Paul Lara is grateful he survived a high dose of a powerfully addictive medication. In examining what happened to them all, his daughter Ashley speaks for many victims who can't believe that the scheme got as far as it did. You know, there's so many lines that had to be crossed to get to that point to where that medication was dispensed that somewhere, someone should have been looking out for the greater good, right? Somebody should have been morally sound enough to say this isn't right and we need to make it stop and there wasn't